Okay, so let's talk about The Last of Us HBO series. As you guys probably know, what I did was I saw the first episode and kind of reacted to that first episode, and then I'm, I'm a man of my word. Uh, I wanted to come back here and talk about the whole series as a collective thing. Uh, so spoiler warning, you are warned. Obviously, if you played the game, you kind of know what happens, but... There's a lot to talk about. I saw the first episode. I really, really liked it. I thought it was super promising. And now that I've watched the whole show, I think like any good gamer worth their salt, uh, I have a lot of things to bitch about. But ultimately, I had a good time and there's a net positive to this that I'm gonna save for the end. But ultimately, I think the show succeeds. There's more than I wanted from it personally, but I think it was a really good time. I think as it adapting something, adapting a video game story, it told that story, uh, it did justice to it, it changed a couple of things in interesting ways, uh, it added and expanded upon some things in some interesting ways. And as someone very familiar with the source material, it kept me engaged. It kept me engaged because like, I wanted to see it recreated on film or on digital. Um, and also uh, just have some things to make me go, oh, oh, they did that, that's interesting. Or, oh, they changed that, that's interesting. Or, oh, they added this here. Like, I like that journey, especially if what I'm watching as a whole is actually good. You know, it's different than me like watching the Resident Evil, like return to Welcome to Raccoon City movie and being like, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? No, here I was like, oh, cool. Oh, interesting. Oh, mm, you know, I liked every person in every role. I think everybody fit the character and kind of became their own ver version of the character in, in some really good ways. Like I can look at those people and go, okay, that's that person, Marlene in particular, uh, Joel and Ellie. But I think the expansions are where like, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad. And by expansions, I mean things that, that you know, were broken out a little bit, uh, given a little bit more depth. Uh, I think Sam and Henry and just kind of like the backstory with who was pursuing them and what was going on. And then of course, Bill's whole story in episode three, I think they were great additions, but like I also look at it like, was it worth it? Because those characters kind of, it comes and goes. With Bill, for me, it was really like the last thing, it, what he said at the end of the episode in the letter, where it was like, do what you can, do whatever you can to protect the people. So like that would of course influence Joel. So there was that gained, but you don't get to spend any actual time with that character and they spent that much time on it where that's fine because there was some justification to it. But for me specifically with Sam and Henry, I think we wasted so much time uh, with the people pursuing them that ultimately led to nothing and they just got immediately killed. I was like, okay, I wish we spent a little more time with Joel and Ellie because I think my biggest issue with the show was the pacing and this is hard for me. Like I thought I was going to be able to watch the show and be, you know, somewhat open-minded, you know, somewhat objective, but like, I can't help it, dude. I can't help but compare it to the game. Uh, and ultimately I like the game way better. Big surprise. The gamer likes the game, but you know, I think that the show just needed more room to breathe. I wish the show was a little longer. I wish the pace was actually a little bit more drawn out uh, because I, I would have felt more with the characters. Am I maybe in the minority? Yeah, maybe. Uh, it seems like people, especially people who haven't played the game, are loving it and was absolutely sold on the relationship with Joel and Ellie. But for me, it just felt like it went a little quick. But again, I think that is my bias. I think that is subjective to me because I'm coming off of the game that I've played multiple times and you spend you know, 10, however long hours with those characters. They're constantly talking and sprinkling in little things in the gameplay while you're just walking around carrying a girl on a pallet or, you know, carrying a ladder or killing zombies. Like there's so much dropped in there to develop those characters over time. Where in the show, you know, we just got it here and there. Like good specific moments like played to you, you know? So uh, like, I'm not saying the show is bad for that. I'm just trying to put it out there where like it's, it's hard when you have good representations of the characters, but you also had those characters where you got to spend so much more time with those characters. You can't help but prefer the one where you got more out of them, you know? So like, it's not really like a harsh critique or anything like that. I'm probably gonna like contradict myself or like I'm, I'm talking in circles cause I do these all off the cuff. I come with some notes, some things I wanna say, but ultimately I just, I just rattle. Uh, so if you like that, thank you for being here as always. But uh, what I did like was specifically how they handled some of the stuff with Joel. And I think some people are gonna disagree with me because people, well, let's just say people have strong feelings about Joel. But I thought, and it was nice to see Pedro Pascal like really, really act. I really liked Joel 
expressing doubt, when the doors were closed, when it was just him and his brother, uh, like he could drop the like facade and just actually express some doubt and some reservations about his task with Ellie uh, and actually acknowledging that he's getting old, he's getting fuzzy, his body is breaking down. I thought that was a really cool angle, dude. Like the game acknowledged that Joel was an older guy, but to have it like actually have that emotional acknowledgement, I thought it was really cool. I was loving that. Also, uh, the suicide thing. So as you probably know in the game, there was like a little thing in Pittsburgh when you see the two people who commit suicide and Ellie's asking questions and Joel says something like, trust me, it ain't, it ain't that easy. That's really it. Uh, here in the last episode when they revealed that, and it's a great follow up to when he said, how'd you get that scar? Oh, someone shot at me and missed. I love, I, I fucking love that they were like, oh, actually he was talking about himself. He tried to kill himself. I really, really liked the way it was handled, specifically with how he talked about it. He was very simple and to the point about it. He didn't, you know, get like dramatic about it. It was just like, yep, nope, uh-huh. I just thought that was a really good sprinkling of depth that fit, it, it made sense. And I actually like, I got emotional during that because it was like, I did like seeing this character on screen. Like to me, I was like, okay, that is like a Joel, cool. And then to add a little more and like, oh man, like something bad in his life, another bad thing in his life, it was like, ooh, it hit me. I was actually surprised because like as much as I love The Last of Us, I don't have like this like immense connection to Joel or anything like that. But like in moments like that in the show, I like, I felt it. I, I think the emotion is good. So I'm doing positives and negatives kind of. Uh, one thing I really kind of couldn't, again, it was something I couldn't take myself away from the game, uh, is that I wish the show replica, so it had Craig Mazin's tone, right? I love him, I love his work on uh, Chernobyl, that show was dope, uh, but uh, something about this show, I thought like the tone was really good, but it lacked that like real desperation, that grit, and that might come down to action and it not having a lot of action, which is fine, but I just wish there was a bit more that could really show the desperation and the scuzziness and, you know, like the grossness you feel while playing through all of The Last of Us. The amount of people like you strangle the life out of them or brutalize them with a brick or a bottle. I thought the show could have really shown some of that. I didn't need balls out action all the time. I get that this is they decided to choose focusing on the characters and the relationships first and foremost, and that is a win. But Damn, like the the Pittsburgh scene, which now doesn't take place in Pittsburgh, but like when the, the car crashes uh, and then they're like, you know, swarmed by the Raiders in that in that store, uh, Joel like kills like one guy. It's well done, but like I wish there was just some it, 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 a lot of scenes. I felt like, oh, man, the action in the game was so much better. And I don't even mean like because I was playing, but I just mean like the actual directing, the framing, the feel of the action and the desperation in the game was more effective. Hey, now before we keep going, it's important to note this video is sponsored by Factor. They also been feeding me. Um, Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Springtime feels like it's almost here and I'm powering up how I'm working, but also how I'm eating and not having to worry about meals has been pretty great because Factor meals show up fresh and they're nutritious, they taste good, and I can just heat them up in the microwave in minutes. This way I'm not losing time meal prepping or shopping for groceries or anything, I'm just good to go. Everything is good to go, taken care of, and I'm not splurging on fast food and stuff. In fact, I'm actually eating some, I'm eating some right here. This is potato leek mash, grilled chicken, and uh, roasted, corn, roasted corn. But Factor offers keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan and veggie options, which includes seafood, meat, plant-based stuff, so there's a lot of choices to eat right and feel good. They also offer these smoothies that I really like. They're good like grab and go in a pinch. They taste delicious. So you wanna check it out? Head to factor75.com or click the link in the description down below and use code onjake50 for 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com. Com, use the code on Jake 50 and big thanks to factor for sponsoring our videos here But again like it does little things here and there that I really like with the fact that like there was that guy Begging for his life and then Joel's like all right Ellie get out of here like stuff like that was really good the little sprinklings They do uh, to kind of make up for some things that I think that the game covered does work as much as they don't have Joel Like murdering a bunch of dudes all the time the little things they sprinkled throughout like that like the first episode where he kind of lost it 
and punch the shit out of that guy just a bit too much. You know, like that stuff worked. And with that action, I think came not a lot of clickers. And I know the show, uh, the, the Last of Us, even the, the game is focused around the people, the drama, the whole, oh, look, turns out we were the last of us all along. That, that's not what they say. That's the Walking Dead. I get, the humans were the walking dead. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like the the fact that they focus on the humans is fine. But like, I wish there was a bit more clicker stuff because it didn't really feel like too much of a threat at any time, except for like a minute. And they also did really good work on them. They like kind of came up with like a different like thing for them. Uh, the, the whole like thing coming out of their mouth. Uh, some of them were practical and I thought that was really, really cool. Also, again, like that's a negative, but like with the positive was I love those flashback scenes setting up the outbreak. I wish there was a little more of that. Like the first episode, the second episode, they were like bone chilling. And that was like Craig Mazin. Like that was like Chernobyl stuff to a T. And you could tell like why they were a thing, like why he's working on this. I also really, really liked the David episode. Like everything about that I thought was perfect. The way it ended was perfect. Uh, the way it focused really just around David and not her like murdering a whole town full of people I thought was more effective. I really just liked the, the, the vibe of it all. Like I, I really liked the way everybody in the town, like you could tell that they were like downtrodden and just stuck eating human meat, whether they knew it or not, because everybody looked like shit. Everybody looked run down. And that was like really effective and cool. Even handsome Troy Baker looked like shit. And it, like, and he also did a great job. Him, uh, Laura Bailey having a little cameo at the end. It's like a blink if you miss it type of thing, which was really cool. And also uh, Ashley Johnson, uh, her bit was pretty cool, actually. And I will say that I was skeptical of them showing any any more of Ellie's origin, but I thought that worked. I thought that was kind of fine. I actually thought like the whole her fighting off the clicker and like like her and like actually pushing the baby out. I actually thought it was kind of cool and kind of like good symbolism of what Ellie's life would be where like she was literally born out of like this desperate like violent moment and then that would be the rest of her life a series of desperate and violent moments you know that's heavy shit throughout i like the little nods here and there that they did uh to like first like acknowledging when okay the last episode when when he boosted her up to get a ladder i was like Woo! Like that was like my MCU cameo moment when my favorite character showed up. Um, stuff like that, but also little nods to two uh, with possibly a glimpse of Dina was kind of interesting. Uh, towards the end of the last episode when they're talking like, we'll go anywhere, the moon, they acknowledged. Uh, to me, I caught that as like acknowledging the whole space capsule moment from two, which is like, yes, they would have that stuff. Like they did walk across the whole country and there's a lot we didn't see, like like a lot. Really with the show, I, I went into it with one thing and uh, essentially I was like, okay, like this is gonna be a show. You know, we're gonna probably have like a, a David scene. Uh, we're gonna see Bill, like we're gonna see clickers, all this stuff's gonna happen. But for me, what I was looking for was like, I hope that it nails the beginning and the end. And I think it nailed the beginning with Sarah. It was a little drawn out. It was interesting. It was really well done. It was actually kind of scary. I talked about that in the first episode. Uh, but with the last episode, I just really hope they nailed that because I wanted to see that rep replicated on screen. But also, I, I, this is going to sound corny, but like I wanted other people to experience that. I, you probably have as well, right? Like you've shown somebody who doesn't play a video game a video game with a big story moment or something that like left a mark on you, whether it's like a getting a high score in a thing or a cutscene, whatever it is, right? And I thought The Last of Us being a big HBO show, which is like HBO is a big deal. Everybody just watches HBO. It's prestige television. My parents watch HBO. They don't even question it. Whatever a new HBO show is, they're on it. Like HBO is a big deal. So I was really, really hoping that they would nail the beginning and the end and that new people would be exposed to this cool storytelling shit. The end of The Last of Us is absolutely incredible. And I wanted people to feel that weird gut punch. And I think they nailed that. I really liked the last episode. It moved a little quick and I was worried that like it, it was the shortest episode, but I thought the whole hospital scene was pretty awesome. It was emotional. It was, it was shocking. It was just right. Joel was cold and it kind of gives that whole context where it's this thing. Okay. Like I'm not going to get into the last of us and like the meaning behind Joel's actions and all that stuff, but like it's a conversation and it's very interesting. And then the end, the last shot with Ellie, we got all that. And I was so excited for people like just, 
paying attention online or, or just talking to other people in real life, even my wife who, who didn't play the game, like just seeing people experience it. My sister like has loved the shit out of this show. Like just seeing that and knowing what they're going to get hit with and, and, and then talking about it after is just fun. It's just satisfying. I don't make things, but like I appreciate people that make things and they make things for reasons like this. And I think the show definitely succeeded for mainstream audiences. It seems like people really like it. It's a good tale with a bunch of like every episode has like this iconic different moment. Uh, and for me as a gamer, like, yeah, I, I can't take my feelings away from the game. Like I've played the game. I've spent more time with these characters, so I can't help but want a little bit more. But like, I'm happy that it's not a shit show. They didn't ruin it. They got the point and I think they entertained a lot of people with a story that I liked and ultimately like wanted more people to see or experience. And like it or not, like unlike other video game adaptations that were like, you know, like the crappier ones or the divisive ones, like this is just a solid one. And I think it's gonna get more people into video games. And I think that's a win. I mean, we talked about the cyberpunk anime, getting people to give cyberpunk a shot, but this is on a whole different level where this is gonna have some people interested in the games. I mean, that's part of the reason why they've remade The Last of Us Part 1 on PS5, like all nice and new and shiny, is because people are gonna jump in for the first time. How many people watched Game of Thrones and then while waiting for the next season, they decided, you know what, I'm gonna get into the books. You know, like I think this is like gonna be like one of the big video game equivalents of that for some people. They want all that extra time. They wanna see who Bill was in the game. Like there, there's so much that they can do that they might pick up the game. And as just like a corny, weird person who just like roots for video games, who, who likes them, I don't know, it's kind of nice. So for as much as for me, there was more I wanted from it, some things here and there, I can point out some pacing things, some things it lacked. I still ultimately like chalk it up as a success. Like it succeeded in giving the last of us feeling to me and now to a bunch more people. But that's where I'm at. I'm coming off kind of hot from the show. I did want to like wait a day and think about it and watch some episodes back uh, before talking about it. So this is where I'm at right now. Who knows how I could feel later on, but I just wanted to talk about it with you guys. Uh, let's talk in the comments. Let's relax though. Uh, the, the Last of Us, I always say, brings out the worst of us. So let's have let's have some interesting conversation about this. I think most people are pretty reasonable. So like you know whether you like ultimately like the show or ultimately don't like the show, I want to hear your pros and cons. Like what did you appreciate? What did you think they could have done better on? Like I mean, it seems like they're definitely 100% making a season two. So it's only going to get crazier. So let's talk about this stuff. I want to hear from you guys. But again, if, if you just like what I'm doing here, I'm just yapping about things I like, video games, movies, things that interest me. Thanks for sitting around. Hopefully I can provide you a couple of minutes of, uh, you know, listening to something while you poop or drive. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm Jake Baldino. Thank you guys for being here. Subscribe because video games pizza's on me.